What if World War I never happened? It was a war to end all wars. The Great War. The First World War. Whatever you call it, World War I had a lasting impact on the world as we know it. It transformed the world from one based on empires and kings and queens to a modern industrial one. The world before World War I was basically a remnant of the 1800s, a days gone by. European empires still control much of the world. America was still a rising industrial power, not yet a superpower as it is today. In Europe, there were a few nation states, but most of the continent was dominated by empires, the Russian Empire, Austro-Hungarian, German, and so on. The war showed how brutal and cruel technological innovation could be. Men were sent to the front lines to die in muddy trenches, ripped to shreds by machines fire, or choked to death from toxic gases. There was no glory in this kind of battle. Only man versus machine. Millions of people died. But what if this war never happened? What if the war to end all wars never occurred? We will discuss the implications and how it could have happened in this video. We must emphasize that by 1914, Europe was like a stack of dry hay waiting to be lit on fire. The empires and nations of Europe were building up their military power, eager to fight for national pride. There was also a series of crises and tensions between the great powers of Europe that had been building up for decades. Europe was a tinderbox, and it is likely that any event could have set it off. Common reasons given for World War I is imperialism, treaties, and nationalism. All of this is true. People were deeply proud of their nations. Tensions over colonies and secret treaties signed between nations all quickened the environment for war. I think the reason that the conflict between truly global was due to the colonies of Europe. Sure, Europe had been a tinderbox for as long as anyone can remember, but it was only recently, before the war, that the nations of Europe controlled such large swaths of land across the world. Without these colonies, World War I would have likely been like any other old European conflict. So how could the First World War have been prevented? Some might say perhaps if we prevent the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, it could have prevented the First World War, but as we have already seen, the roots of the war run much deeper than the assassination. The assassination provided the spark to light the tinderbox. However, that is not to say that the First World War was inevitable. War is a human problem, and it can be fixed by humans as a result. Although many people at the beginning of World War I were jubilant over going to war, thinking that it would be over in a few months with their respective countries victorious, clearly that was not the case. What I can say is that the leaders of the European countries could have prevented the war. I mean, the reason that Austro the Austro-Hungarian Empire and Serbia first went to war thus sparked the First World War was because the Austrian leader Franz Joseph took such a harsh line against Serbia. Joseph issued an ultimatum against the Serbs, saying that they had to agree to all of the conditions. When they refused one of the conditions, Joseph went to war. This conflict could have remained that way if the secret treaties signed between the powers were not signed in the first place. Of course, Germany had to enter the war as well, being an ally of Austria-Hungary. This began a set of dominoes resulting in war. Let's say that the treaties were not signed and Austro-Hungary fights a small war with Serbia. This is unlikely in our timeline due to the complex set of interests and treaties signed. But in the alternate timeline, no one comes to aid either side since there are no treaties signed. Instead, Serbia is severely damaged by the war as the empire invades it. What would the rest of the world look like? Well, the other European countries, having built up their arms and such, would be itching for war. But it never happens. Instead, tensions remain high among the great powers of Europe, each still trying to find a way to outmaneuver the others. All throughout Europe, the monarchs would remain in place. This is because the chaos of World War I doesn't expose the weaknesses of the monarchy, 
and rendered them obsolete in the modern industrial world. Russia in this timeline is a monarchy and the Bolshevik revolution never happens. World War I was the main trigger for the Russian Revolution. Without it, the people may still be discontent, but they don't revolt. In the rest of Europe, people continue with their 19th century manners, believing in imperialism, monarchies, and darker matters such as social Darwinism and racism. World War I didn't entirely erase these things, but it transformed the world into the 20th century, out of the world of the 1800s. In the rest of the world, Europeans continue holding on to their empires. The German Empire is especially bigger in this timeline, since it never loses vast chunks of territory to the Allied powers in the First World War. Speaking of empires, the Austro-Hungarian and Ottoman empires, even if they don't collapse, are likely to face much chaos and weakening. In the Austro-Hungarian Empire, there were numerous little ethnic groups all clamoring for independence in nation states. This is the same was true in the Ottoman Empire, which was called the sick man of Europe. Both of these empires would weaken and be increasingly vulnerable to foreign intervention in the coming years. Going to the other side of the Atlantic, America would be one of the world's most powerful industrial nations, but it wouldn't intervene in world affairs to a great extent. It would remain distinct from the European powers, keeping to itself. World War I was the war that pushed America to join in world affairs for a short amount of time. And once the war was done, America was back to minding its own matters. And that is how the League of Nations failed to gather any real power and stop the rise of Hitler and Tojo. So in the alternate timeline, such a League of Nations never arises, the precursor to the UN. In the world of no world war, the world would be technologically stagnant for the most part. Yes, there might be the occasional intervention or two, but for some reason, war is a driver of human technology and progress. This conflict saw the use of machine guns, artillery, and airplanes, the latter of which was invented roughly a decade before the war began. The war saw the use of 20th century technology, and undeniably, Technology was given a rapid boost by powers trying to find an advantage over their enemy. So without this conflict, you could see a bunch of 19th century technology existing well into the 20th century. Airplanes were one, would likely not be advanced nearly as fast as it did in our time. The first primitive tanks came as a result of the war as well. Without the first world war, you could probably say goodbye to those. What would be the reasons for tanks without war? I'm not saying that these technologies were solely produced by the war. Instead, they were largely aided by it. These technologies probably would still evolve sometime later in the century, but don't expect to live in a society as advanced as today without the First World War. Of course, we can't mention this conflict without mentioning World War II. If the First World War didn't happen, the second one wouldn't happen as well. The reason is simple. World War I and the Second World War are basically parts of the same war, with a brief 20-year interlude. The Second World War was built off of a desire for revenge, especially in Germany, where harsh terms were laid out for the defeated nation. Without the Treaty of Versailles, there is no broken Germany, no rise of Hitler, no Nazism, no Holocaust. And you get the whole idea. I'm not saying that other nations, for example, Japan, wouldn't become fascist, but the whole thing wouldn't result in a world war. Only perhaps a smaller localized war between a few nations. I can do a whole video of what if World War II never happened if you like, but for me to do that, please like and subscribe for more great content. This is Scholar of the World signing out. Thanks for watching.